Welcome back, welcome back. It's Trilock here bringing you another uh, C another Java. Oh, it's Java. Java tutorial, hopefully with some humor. We'll see how it goes. So today we're gonna talk about loops. It's when things go loopty 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 loopty. Yeah, I mean, you get it. Let's get on with it. So we're gonna open up our program. We all remember, right, how to do that. Except for me, I don't. I think it starts with like public, yes, public. Class, oh, public class. What do I name this class? Loop! Loop. Public class loop. Yes. We got that right. And then there's like some, some static... Uh, uh, static... Uh, Oh, public, static, right? Something like that. Void, main, main is main capitalized, main, no, main is not capitalized. Parentheses, and then there's some like arguments here, like string, array, yeah, args, mm. nice. Well, look at that. Yeah, give me a round of applause. I got those two things down. Well, I haven't programmed in Java for a while, so I just came out of a five-hour session of Ruby. So I'm a bit confused here still. But let's write a loop. Um, I hope I still remember how to do that. Let's write a while loop. Basically, I'll explain it to you. Pretty, It's pretty simple, really. While, and then you put here condition. Now, you don't actually put the word condition in there. I know some of you are going to do that, but refrain from doing it, please. I, I mean, I, I know you're so anxious to type, but condition is actually a statement that evaluates to either true or false. And uh, if, it, if it evaluates to true, uh, then we, we do whatever in the loop, and whatever in the loop we specify with these uh, squiggly braces. I guess you can't see them here, but it's squiggly. So here we're gonna put the squigglies and while the condition is true we're gonna do whatever is in the squigglies so in fact I need something for the condition um, I'm gonna put here I'm gonna make myself an integer right I'm gonna make an integer and I call it i which is the, the very generic name for an integer I don't even have to set it equal to zero um, but I think I don't uh, Yes, because it initializes it automatically. In C++ you have to set it equal to zero otherwise. So, there's some differences there. So, while condition. Let's say I want to say while i is... Um, oh, my less than sign is not working. This is not going to work. Oh, I have a second keyboard. Okay. Less than 10. While i is less than 10. And what are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to print something out system dot out dot print ln print line oh yeah you're a loser so who can guess how many times this is gonna get printed out how many times am I a loser um, actually if I just do it like this guess what happens well we can probably try it but it should get printed out infinitely many times so we call void main and then boom see my my thingy I guess it's still going yeah it's still going see I try to drag it up it's an infinite loop it never stops can't even close it close oh need to reset the machine uh oh that was bad so we don't want it to go on forever that might hurt us so instead of making it go on forever which is basically if i is 0 and the, the condition is i is less than 10 it's always true and it will never become false so that's kind of useless so instead of doing that we're gonna say i equals i plus 1 so now let's say we're this the computer and we're walking through the loop and we hear system out we see system out of println like okay we print it to the screen and like oh i equals i plus one what does that mean 
Well, we take the value of i, which is in this case, in the first case, it's zero, and then it becomes different stuff. It gets different values. So we take this value zero, and we add one to it. So now we get one, and then we put it back into i. So now i contains one. So on, after the first iteration, i will contain one, the number one. After the second, it will contain two. So eventually, i will be ten and then our loop will stop. So how many times will this print out uh, your loser? Well, if you count, it should be 10. Maybe 9. No, it should be 10. Let us try it. Boom! You're a loser, you're a loser, user, you're a loser, user, you're a loser, you're a loser, user, ba, 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 ba. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh! I'm a winner. I guessed it right. So, it's cool, isn't it? While. Now, what if we say while well, i is less than 0? And then we wanted to print something out, like in any case, you're a loser. Well, if we compile it now and we run it, look at that. Uh, nothing happened, of course, because it didn't, did, it didn't need to print anything out, right? Because i is less than zero, well i is not less than zero, so it never gets to this part. What if you want to make it get to that part? We're like, I want to print out I'm a loser! Anyways, even if i is not less than zero, screw i, I'm just a loser. So now, instead of doing that, you, you put a do, and then you put these braces, and then you just say do braces. And then the compiler is reading this like, bam pa bam pa bam pa pa do. Oh, means I have to do it. System out print ln, you're a loser. So it will print out you're a loser, and then it increments i equals i plus 1, so i becomes 1, and then we put the condition at the end. So we're sort of tricking the compiler. We're saying, like, do this, and then check if this is true. So it has, it has to do that, because it doesn't know the condition beforehand. So we put the condition afterwards, do while, and while i is less than 0. Well, it's sort of like an afterthought, like, oh, wait, i is less than zero, but it's too late, I've already printed it out. So, oops, I need a semicolon. It's good to be attentive, no? So now we loop-de-loop, -loop, and boom! See, you're a loser, it only printed it once, but I forgot to clear my terminal. So maybe I should clear my terminal and show that it only printed it once, because, of course, you can't tell the difference. So, boom! Yeah, see, it's only printed it once, that's what I said. So now, I'm a loser once. So what if I wanted to print it three times, but in more compact form? Well, there's a way to do that. In fact, what we're going to do is use something called a for loop. Now, a for loop looks complex, but it's actually really easy. We have two minutes to go over it, and I promise you it will be really easy. So we keep the braces here that uh, declare a block of text that we're going to execute. And then we're going to put three things here. First, we're going to initialize our variable. Um, int i equals zero. Scratch this. Kick it out of our function. Kick it in the os. So, int i equals zero. We initialize. Oops, not colon. Semicolon. Don't forget, semicolon. And the condition, the condition for our loop i is less than 5, while i is less than 5, and then what do we do every single time we loop? Well, this is this thing, right? i equals i plus 1. So instead of doing that, we just say i plus plus, which just means it increment i every time we go through this loop. So this loop, in fact, will run five times. First time i equals 0, second time i equals 1, etc., etc., etc. Just keep looping, and we'll loop five times. And we'll say I'm a loser five times. Which is better than being loser ten times, I guess. So, let's check. Oh, you're a loser! 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 Why is it six? Oh, that's because I didn't clear the tour the terminal beforehand. So I'm definitely a loser. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this quick video on loops, and now you can go loop de doo by yourself. Well, I hope you look forward to the next tutorial. Next tutorial will be on arrays, and we're going to whiz through this Java stuff in no time. You can take your AP and get your 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I better shut up now. Bye!
see you again.